Amen. Let's stand together if you're able and willing. And if you're not, thank the Lord that you're here. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How many of you are glad to be in the house of the Lord today? It's the family gathered together, together in the presence of the Lord. Let's invite the presence of our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord, for your sweet spirit. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for the joy that we feel. We want more of you. We want to praise you. We've come to exalt you. With all of creation, we've come to lift our voice and magnify you and exalt you today. For you are worthy of the praise. We've come to celebrate your goodness in Jesus' name. Let's worship the Lord together. God is my refuge and strength, my refuge in time of trouble, trouble. God is my refuge and strength, my refuge in time of trouble, my refuge in time of trouble. He will hide me under the rock, under the rock, under the rock. Yes, he will hide me under the rock, safe in the time. Bless the Lord 
glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name together. Glorify the Lord with me. Come exalt his name forever. has a place of stillness for us today that we can find in him, a place of peace. And this song is just based on some of the things that are found in scripture about how God is over all the earth, just like we prayed in, in prayer today. And I'm so thankful that. So just, let's just focus on God and find that place of stillness right now. like to lift your hands for a moment. Be still in the presence of the Lord. Crawl, call upon him. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we come to you, Lord. We look to you, Jesus. 
You are God and you are God alone. There's none beside you. There's none worthy like you. There's none faithful like you. Amen. Amen. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer this morning. We're so thankful for his blessings. Amen. If you have a special spoken request, I don't normally take prayer requests on Sunday morning, but I do want to remember Wilma. I want to remember uh, Iva. I want to remember, of course, uh, Frank and uh, Joanne today. Remember them. But is there anybody that has a, a, a maybe a critical situation in, in, that they want to share with us? Yes. Edith. Let's remember Edith. What was her situation? Okay. She's losing weight. She's not feeling well at all. Let's remember Edith this morning. Someone else? A really special need. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, whatever your needs are. Amen. We're so glad that you're with us today. Let's just take some time to seek the presence of the Lord. Would you turn to Him right now? I don't know what your needs are. I sense some needs in the house. That's why I'm saying this. And that's why I was willing to take requests. So I don't know what you're feeling in your heart or mind right now, but would you just take a moment to just seek after the Lord and just wait upon the Lord and turn your heart and mind toward Him right now. Heavenly Father, you see the needs that are in the house. Every burden, every care, every weight, every situation. God, nothing is too hard for you. You are the God that created the heavens and the earth, Lord. You're the one who said, let there be light. And you're the one who said, it is finished. Lord, the work is already complete. My sin, my iniquity, my sickness, my disease, my shame, my sorrow are gone in Jesus' name. I look to you right now. Would you call upon him? I look to you right now. I'm tired of people disappointing me. I'm tired of falling short myself. I'm tired of the weaknesses, Lord, and the brokenness in my world and culture, and I'm reaching toward you. I'm crying out to you today. God, you see the needs, Lord, in Edith's life. You see the need in Wilma's life and Iva. Lord, you're able to strengthen. You're able to heal, Lord, in Frank's life and Joanne. Lord, you're able to overshadow. Hallelujah. We are not weak and powerless. We have the power of the name. We have the name of Jesus. Our Lord, you are our sword and shield. Lord, you are our armor. You are our strength. Would you just begin to praise him? Would you begin to thank him? Thank you, Lord, for the strength to be here today. Thank you, Lord. I think you'll be with June right now. Lord, I pray you speak against, Lord, Lord, inflammation and, Lord, arthritis in Jesus' name. Lord, we come against every situation. Hallelujah. If you have a need right now, would you just lift up your hand toward the Lord and surrender it? Lord, I give it to you. Lord, I cast my care on you. You told us, Lord, not to be anxious for anything, but with prayer and supplication to make our needs known to you. Hallelujah. Come on, church. We're not just doing a ritual. We're calling upon the Lord who is able, the one who is willing and able to meet our needs. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're a great big God with all the power and dominion and authority. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, come on, just wait on him for a few more moments. Who knows what he might do if we would just wait a moment and let him do what he wants to do, Lord. Do a work in our minds. Do a work in our hearts. Do a work in our soul today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I feel faith in the house. Faith is what moves God. It's not how, it's not how much we need Him. This is the world does not understand this. They blame God for their problems, but they don't ask Him to meet their needs. And we get a call upon Him. We need to ask Him for what we need. Amen. We need to ask. Jesus always did that. He said, "What do you would you have of me?" The man's lame. Jesus, can't you see? He's lame. But he says, he understands that when we ask, that means there's a faith issue. We've got to do our part by trusting in him and believing. We've got to ask him for what we need. Oh, would you just take a minute longer? There's some people here tonight, today that need to ask him, Lord, I need this. My family needs this. My, my situation is, is dire. My situation is challenging. But you are willing. You are a faithful friend and father. You're not going to leave us, good shepherd. You're able and willing to minister and to strengthen. Hallelujah. 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 
If it's appropriate, would you take the hand of your neighbor, put your hand on their shoulder, and just begin to pray a blessing over them. Would you do that? Lord, I'm praying a blessing, Lord. You know what they need in their life. You know the need for direction they have. God, you know what their future holds. God, but you are the one who knows them. God, you are the one who understands them. I pray a blessing over them. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord give you peace. May the Lord overshadow you and bless you. May the Lord be upon you to heal you and to deliver you. Lord, just, right, just give them the strength and the rest that they need. Come on, this is the body, ministering to the body. This is why we come to church. We can't get this at home. The body ministers to the body. We need each other. We need each other. Come on, lean, lean forward. Put your hand on the person in front of you, behind you, if it's appropriate, and pray for them right now. Lord, we pray a blessing of healing and strength and comfort, God. Lord, bring a, bring a source of strength and rest. Be, Lord, a help to them during this time. Oh, raise them up, Lord. Bless them. Bless their family. Go before them into this week. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Hallelujah. I wait on you, Lord. I reach for you. Hallelujah. I don't want to weary anybody, but God is working in this place. God is strengthening people that are open to receiving strength. He's willing to help. He's willing to heal. I rebuke all hindrance. I rebuke doubt and fear. I lose faith in the house today. Mountain be moved. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Turn around, shake a hand or two. You can move around a little bit if you want to. Take your freedom and liberty. It's the house of the Lord, and we have freedom in the house. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes. Ah, I love it. Amen. Okay. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you for being with us this morning. What a great, beautiful crowd today. I love it. We have several guests that are with us. Make sure that you go out of your way to connect with any of our guests. Amen. That are with us today. And some are just family members that just don't come as often glad that you're here. Amen. But we're so glad that you're able to be with us today. It's part of the family of God. Amen. Just going to mention a couple things. Yes. Go ahead. Sure. Isn't that amazing? Amen. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Amen. There's so many beautiful connections, isn't there? Amen. Thank you, Nelson. Amen. We're part of the family. You know, there's many people out there that need connection, that need community. Make sure that we go out of your way. Not only here, this is just, we want them here, of course, but more importantly, we have them in our homes and in our hearts throughout the week. Amen. That's what really matters. That's where the love of God is shed or brought in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, that's right, the Holy Ghost, depending on which key version are you reading, right? <laughs> Means the same thing, though. Amen. We're thankful for the presence of the Lord that's here today. A few announcements, and then we'll dismiss uh, the Sunday school class. We'll have Sunday school this morning, so after the song, yeah, when the song starts. So you'll have to go down during the song. I'll lose I lose one of my singers. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, <clears throat> but we're so thankful that they're here. But we do want to mention several announcements, of course. Uh, we've got uh, several things going on. Don't forget small group. You're more than welcome to join one of our small groups. And one of our small groups is multiplied. Hallelujah. We love it when they grow. Amen. And, and uh, they were telling me one of my groups was still bringing in extra chairs. So that's a good sign. Um, we may have to multiply sooner. That's good. That's a good sign. 
Springtime is a time of growth, so that it's timing is good. Timing is good. Amen. <clears throat> and I'm enjoying all the birds and all the things that are happening around us outside, so why not have some life inside? Amen. Amen. So I'm uh, looking forward to that. Also, uh, don't forget that there's uh, several things upcoming. Uh, there's going to be some stuff at the college if you're interested uh, the, the, to, toward the end of this month and the first of May. Also, uh, next month uh, we have, I believe, Mother's Day is coming up, not too distant future, right? It's crazy how quick it comes. Hit that 14th, yes. And then also, you said there's a, a convention? Youth convention is May 19th to 21st, and it's at Capital Community Church. Oh. Um, so the services are free, but if if anyone is interested, um, a young person in the youth age bracket, um, to go to any of the extra events, then they have to pay for registration. So just come see me if uh, you want to <laughs> register for the events, but um, the services are free. Excellent. So we should definitely, I strongly encourage everyone that possibly can to avail yourself of the opportunity to gather with people of the same precious faith and uh, gather together with the people of God in a wonderful opportunity. It's a great way to support our young people too, of course. But let's be honest, it's kind of fun to be around young people. It makes us feel young again. And I, I, I can still pretend that I'm not gray-haired for a while because I can't see it. So, you know. <laughs> That's right. I was thinking about that yesterday, actually, Sister Altina, that I was thinking, you know, I'm not old yet. And then I got thinking I'm 54. So <laughs> maybe I'm getting up there. But, you know, hey, we're, 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 it doesn't, it, I don't feel it yet most of the time. Uh, but I'm thankful that I have the presence of the Lord. So, and uh as we go into the springtime, we want to remember the goodness of God. Okay, so uh, let's just uh, keep those things in mind those as we move forward. And we're so thankful for the opportunity today. We're going to sing, and then, of course, as, as we do, Sunday school can be dismissed uh, for the children. And we're going to stay here for the word of the Lord. Amen. God bless. So faithful, so constant, so loving and so true. So powerful in all you do, you fill me, you see me, you know my every move, you love me to sing to you.
and lift your hands for just a moment. Lord, I will trust you no matter what storms I go through. Come on, do you mean that? I will trust you, Lord. I will still listen to your voice. No matter what's going on in my life, no matter what challenges I face, I will trust you, Lord. I have put my hope in you. I am looking to you, Jesus, my refuge and my own strength, my help and my hope. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your loving kindness. I worship you, Jesus. I thank you, Jesus, for your compassion. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what we're feeling here today is beautiful and sweet if you're reaching out for him. You, you know what I'm talking about. This is the legacy of someone who gave his life for us, as we talked about just recently. It's the legacy of someone who laid down his life for us. It's a legacy of someone who cherishes you and loves you beyond what we can even comprehend. It's an amazing thing. This beautiful legacy that Jesus has left us. I'm going to start a series this morning called Legacy. Legacy. This morning I'm going to talk about the Lord's legacy. Amen. Amen. Lord willing, if you'll give us the ability. Would you stand together? We're going to go to the word of the Lord this morning. Thank you for being with us. What a beautiful presence of the Lord is here. Thank you to all of our guests and friends that are with us today. We're so glad that you're with us. But I hope you don't mind if we get ready into what the Lord has to say to us today. In the first of, I don't know how many, I've got lots of things to say about this topic. So I, it may be for several weeks, but this is a legacy series. Amen. Connecting to our, our theme for this year, G3. Amen. We're talking about, of course, today we'll be talking about uh, various aspects of how God wants to give to us, how we can get from Him, and how He wants us to go with Him, and He wants to go with us. Amen. Matthew 10, verse 7 through 8. Matthew 10, verse 7 through 8. Very simple question today for you. What will I do with my Lord's legacy? What will I do with God's legacy? And that's, we'll talk about that in just a minute, but what that means. But let's look at this in Matthew 10, 7 through 8. You'll see this is a, connected to our theme for the year. As you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. Amen. 
And we've received something from the Lord. The Lord wants to bless you. Would you reach up your hands and say, Lord, I need something from you today. If you, if you need something, would you, if there's anybody hungry in the house, would you call out to the Lord today? Lord, I'm hungry for something from you today. I'm hungry for you to feed my soul. Lord, I need something from you. There are needs in this house. There are needs in our family. There are great needs in our culture and world. And God, we're looking to you. Lord, you have left us a legacy. You have left us an inheritance. You've left us promises great and precious. Lord, they're not the promises of man. They're the promises of our creator and maker, the one who gave his life for us. And Lord, what will I do with my Lord's legacy? What will I do with my Lord's legacy? You have left me an incredible inheritance and legacy. I thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, before you're seated, turn around, shake someone's hand, let them know you're glad they're here, give them a fist bump, whatever you think is appropriate. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. You don't have to wait for him. He, he's socializing. <laughs> Amen. So good to be here this morning. So glad that you all could be here. Amen. We're going to talk a little bit about legacy. Say legacy. Yeah, see, we're a Pentecostal church. We like to interact around here. So if you don't stay with it, then the sermon gets minutes and minutes and 10 minutes longer, and it takes a lot. No, I'm just, I'm not trying to terrorize you or anything. <laughs> Amen. I don't know about you, but I'd like to leave this world a better place than I found it. Yeah? Anybody feel that way? Anybody feel that uh, In fact, uh, one, of my, one of my dreams as a young man was to be wealthy enough to leave an inheritance for my kids. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but that would be nice. Amen. And so we've heard about legacy media. We hear about all kinds of different kinds of legacies and different things that are involved. But we just, we realize that uh, God's desire is that he left us a legacy in Jesus Christ. As a member of the body of Christ, we have an inheritance how do we know that? Because there was an Old Testament and a New Testament. And the Old Testament, all that left us was death and destruction. But the New Testament, what the New Testament gives us is something that's greater, is something that's more powerful. It's the legacy of the innocent one that paid our debts. How many of you would like everybody to pay your debts? Anybody want somebody to pay your debts? <laughs> Amen. Well, there's, we all have some challenges and different things. Let me just like define legacy this morning. Um, of course, legacy, uh, of course, can be talked about as a covenant or a testament or an inheritance. The noun legacy um, means an amount of money or property left to someone in a will. Hallelujah. We all like that. Uh, not the loss, but the gain. And of course, but the second thing that we can use as the word legacy is a long lasting impact of particular events, actions, etc., that took place in the past or a person's life. And so we're going to talk a little bit about a legacy. This is going to be our legacy series. We'll talk a little bit about it as we move forward. And we'll probably talk about different things that are legacies in our lives. Uh, the legacy of Moses, perhaps, if we have time, and the legacy of Elijah. Uh, we're going to talk about various people, Abraham's legacy. And so in this series over the next several weeks, if the Lord should choose to take us that way, I really would like to talk about some legacies. In other words, some things that have left for us that if we're not careful, we can leave them behind because we don't ever show up to pick them up. Wouldn't it be sad if at the reading of a will of, a, of an aunt or an uncle that passes away, it would be a sad occasion, but at the reading of the will, usually there's a plan for the, what's going to happen with what's what's left of their inheritance, what they have. And so you can receive an inheritance. And the reason that Jesus died, in fact, the Bible even calls Jesus the testator. When, when the testator dies, when the one that writes the will dies, then the inheritance is given. And this is the power of what Jesus did. As we were talking about this just recently, of course, when Jesus uh, died on the cross and when he was buried, when he was resurrected, the death of the testator meant that the inheritance was given to us. What was Jesus's, what belonged to Jesus, all the power in heaven and earth that belonged to Jesus was now available to those who were written in his will. And so there is a legacy of Easter that we're talking about today. There's a legacy 
There's a blessing. There's a, there's a, a reading of the will that allows the will of the one who died to be performed and bless those whom they choose. And so there's a, a legacy that's really given. Matthew 10, verse 1. And it says this. It says this. And when he had called his 12 disciples to them, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. There's a concept here that God wants us to gr- grab hold of. When we, when we are able and willing to do what God wants us to do, God will give us the power that belongs to us because it's a legacy. How about you? It would be kind of nice for someone to leave me a car or a nice house, right? Especially if it was unexpected. Everybody wants, you know, something left in the will. They want to check out the will of the testator. And when the testator dies, the inheritance is given. And so Jesus gave power to his disciples. Now, this was early in his ministry. Earlier in his ministry, he gave his 12 disciples power. But did you notice they struggled with embracing the power? Why? Because they didn't have the spirit of Christ yet. They had received the earnest of their inheritance. In a sense, he gave them power to go out and heal diseases. He gave them the power to over uh, unclean spirits. And he gave them power over all kinds of disease and sicknesses. And the reality is that is still available today. There's freely given a legacy of the Lord. The Lord has given us his power. He has given us his authority, his dominion. The same spirit that was in Christ Jesus, if it dwells in us, it's not only going to be a blessing in this life, but a blessing in the life to come. And so this promise freely given, this spirit of the living God, when we open our hearts and say, yes, Lord, I receive your spirit, when we allow him to flow through us, and as we speak in tongues, as the spirit gives it utterance, We have the same power that was in Jesus Christ. When the testator dies, all the promises, all the inheritance is freely given. Unless you have some kind of a cruel will, well, they got to do some kind of treasure hunt. Usually, when the testator dies, there's a reading of the will. And whatever's in the will, that's how all the possessions are are apportioned or given out. And the reality is when Jesus, the King of glory, passed away, he chose to give blessings freely to us. Amen. This is the legacy that we're talking about of Easter. This is the legacy of what Christ has accomplished in our life. This is the benefit and the blessing that God has given us. And here's the reality. If you don't show up, you don't get anything. If you don't care enough to show up, and I'm just so glad that you've shown up today, hopefully you'll get something from what we're doing. The reality is, as we've talked about, God's desire is that we get this, is that we get this. We we can't just wait for it to come to us. We have to arrive. We have to be here. And that's one reason why we come to church. This is where we're reminded and where where we're revealed to us the will of God for us in Christ Jesus, the testator that died. And so in Acts chapter 10, verse 4 through 5, it says this, and when he observed him, he was afraid. He said, what is it, Lord? So he did said to him, your prayers and alms have come up as a memorial before God. Now send men to Joppa and send for Simon, whose surname is Peter. The reality is Sometimes we have to do something to get the inheritance. If you're not there at the reading of the will, if you don't go out of your way to to be there for the time that's right, if you're not willing to make the effort to be where the the, uh, reading of the will is and where the the blessings of the one who has died are going to be passed out, where the, the reading of the will, where his desires or her desires are being read. What The story that we're talking about here is Cornelius' story. In Acts chapter 10. And this is where God makes it clear to the disciples that he has a plan for the Gentiles too. Can I get an amen from all the Gentiles? Amen. That would be all of us probably. Amen. Unless you have some very strong Jewish background. Amen. We are so thankful that the testator died. The one who wrote the will uh, died. And because he died, we have available to us all the promises in the book. That was not possible before Jesus died. 
Before then, the Jews received their rewards, the Gentiles received their reward, the Samaritans received their reward. But what we find in the Acts of the Apostles is that the blessing that God poured out is meant to be for all mankind. For every woman, every child, every person who has any kind of faith, God wants you to get the reward, to get the promises, not that what you deserve, not what you've earned, but simply because Jesus loves you. He cares for you, and he wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be overshadowed with mercy and with grace. And so an angel shows up, begins to talk to Cornelius. Now, he's a good man, but he's not saved. He's a good man who has given away many alms, and he was very careful, and he was very careful to observe everything that he knew, but he still was not saved. And honestly, there wasn't anybody reaching out to him because the, the Jews didn't believe the Gentiles could be saved. But Jesus changed all that. Man, if there's any heart of hope in you, if there's any joy in your spirit, if anybody's full of the Holy Spirit, there should be something leaping in when you were right now. Because you know what? It's because Jesus came that we are brought into the household of faith. And we are no longer outside looking in like little beggar children looking in at Christmas time, wondering what, what, what we could have, and wondering if we're even going to have any food for the day. But instead, we've been invited in to sit at the master's table. We've been invited in to put a new robe of righteousness on us, get us all cleaned up, and give us power and authority to give us a ring to give us authority and power to use his name when we need something why because Jesus came and the testator has died and the one the wheel is now enforced and now we can get what God wants to give us I believe today there's some people that need to go get what God wants for them. You can't wait for it to just happen to you like this happened here with Cornelius he had to send someone to go get Peter, he had to go send someone. Peter was, was he didn't believe that, the, that it was available to the, to, the, to the Gentiles yet. But this is the story of the transformation that makes it possible for us to be in a church building on April 19th. April, excuse me, April 16th. 19th will be later this week, hopefully. <laughs> Amen. That's, that's God's desire for us. This door was open, this door of blessing, because the testator died, because Jesus died. There is now an inheritance for us. And what we celebrated last week, we can celebrate it again this week, because now it's no longer closed. It's not just for Jews. It's for Gentiles. It's for Samaritans. It's for whosoever will. So I'm encouraging you today. If you're waiting on God to show up and give it to you, why don't you go get it? It's time for us to leave where we are and leave our comfort zones and say, Jesus, I've come to get what you have for me. I've come to receive the promise. I've come to receive my inheritance. I've come to receive my reward. Not because I deserve it, because you want to give it to me. Hallelujah. Could someone give God some praise today? Maybe a hand clap. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings. They sent men, Cornelius sent men to Joppa. This is Cornelius' story. And to receive the Lord's legacy or the Lord's reward or the Lord's blessing. He listened to the Lord. I wonder if there's anybody listening to Jesus today. What's Jesus saying to you? What's Jesus been saying to you this week? What, what is the Spirit of God calling you to do? What is He calling you to act upon? Because it's not enough to listen. Faith without works is dead being alone. We reality is if we really believe something, if we really, really believe the stove's on fire, we don't touch it. And if we really believe the food's ready, we show up in the, in the dining room to eat, right? When something's available for us, we need to go get it. I wonder if there's anybody in the house tonight that is willing to go get what God has provided. You know, the, God's desire. There is an inheritance that is available. There is a, an inheritance that God has made available to us because the testator has died. Jesus died so that we might receive the reward and the blessings not only of life but eternal life and life everlasting and abundant life. That's God's desire for you. It's his desire for me. But you got to show up and get it. 
Amen. There's a legacy that God wants to give us. And when we pray, hallelujah, and give and act, amen, we want our Lord's legacy. That we, will, we will pray. We will seek after him. We will do what we have to. We will give away whatever we have to give away in order to receive what we want. It's time for the church to say, I'm going to rise up from where I am, and I'm going to go get it. It's time for the lost and the lonely to rise up and say, I want to find a family that will love me. I, it's time for the people that are hurting to find a place where they can be healed that's God's desire that's why he came I would to God that there were some people here today they would get up and get it they would go get what they need from God you know over and over again in scripture and I mentioned this a few moments ago Jesus would ask someone that was lame or someone that was blind what do you want what would you have of me I wonder if you're hearing the voice of God today God is here asking you. He's asking you, Kevin. He's asking you. He's asking you, what do you want? What is it that you need? Do you hear him? Do you hear God's desire? Or you, hopefully you're not too far away to hear the voice of God. Hopefully you're here today in the house of God because you want to hear something from God. You want to hear what he's saying to you. And I'm telling you right now, as the man of God in this house, as the voice of God, he is asking you, what would you have of me? What do you really want? What do you really want? Come on. What do you really want? You see, if you don't have a want to, then he's not going to give you anything. But if you know what you want, then you can ask of God in faith, believing, because it's available to whosoever will. Whoever has a want, a will, a desire, he will give you what you need. Has anybody ever proven that, by the way? Can I see any testimonies in the house by a raised hand? You prayed and asked for something from the Lord, and he met your need. Look at this. Wow. God is a prayer answering God. He's a God that answers faith. Those that believe enough to act and call upon him. And go and get it. That's what Cornelius did. That's what Cornelius did. He heard the word and he obeyed it. And he sent people to where Peter was. That's what it says right here. Your prayers and your alms that come up a memorial. You know, sometimes we give to God and we serve God to the best of our ability. But God wants to also give back to us blessings. And he wants to pour out things upon us. He's, he's not a pauper. He's, not, he's a king of kings. He's a lord of lords. He has all dominion and power and authority. Why are we living like we're, we're, we're worthless and we have no value? When he gave his life for us, he gave his life for me. Come on, it's time to receive your inheritance, child of God. It's time to receive your inheritance. The testator has died. The one who wrote the will has died. The Old Testament is fulfilled, and the New Testament is coming to play. Amen. It's time for us to receive the earnest of our inheritance, the beginning of the promises of God. God's desire is that you would be saved, that your household would be saved, that your neighbor would be saved, that our community would be saved. Oh, God, that our country would be turned back to him. Well, what do we have? What's stopping us? We have to go get it. We have to go get it. We have to go to where Jesus is. We have to run to Jesus if we can. We have to be ready to cry out when he goes by. Like blind Bartimaeus, we've got to cry out until we receive and get his attention. Until we find what we need. Amen. Rise and walk. Amen. God wants us to receive all the blessings. He wants to open the doors that are closed. He wants to open blessings. He wants to pour out blessings. Oh, I feel a, 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 a prophetic spirit. God wants to pour out blessings you cannot contain. He does. I don't know what kind of God you're serving. Maybe you think he's stingy and he wants to withhold things. But you just have to look out in the world and creation and realize, look, God is a God of life. God is a God of strength. God is a God that brings joy. God is a God that wants to bring blessing. And we have to get it. We have to cry out for it. And then once we receive from the Lord, and I said this was a, a tied into our theme for this year. Once we get from God, then we need to give. And it says here in Matthew 28, 19 through 20. Very familiar passage of scripture for almost everybody in Christendom. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. 
baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. In his last words here on earth, he reminded his disciples that there is a purpose for what we receive from God, that God wants us to go and give. Because here's the thing, as wonderful as it is to receive from God, and all of us need from God, all of us are dependent on God, God also wants us to have this incredible, this incredible legacy that God has for us. It's not just for us, it's for whosoever will. But if they have never heard, if they've never heard that there is any such, and some of you, just a few months ago, you did not know that much about God. There's some of us here today, just a few years ago, we knew nothing about God. We knew very little about His love. We knew very little about His mercy. We knew very little about His grace and His mercy. And yet God has called us and chosen us and said that you are my child. He has said, you have a right to my inheritance. I have made you through the blood of Jesus part of the family of God. And now that we have received all these great and precious promises, there's no greater joy than to share it with people. There's no greater joy than to share what we found, than to share the hope, than to share the joy, than to share the peace that God has given us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We're in the period between Easter and Pentecost. And I'm here to tell you today, we have a legacy that God has given us. A promises. There's promises. The testator has died. And now we have the right. Oh, I wish someone today would I hear what I'm saying. We have the right to take the power of the Holy Spirit and go where he wants us to go. We have the power to pray over the sick and they shall recover. We have the power to pray for those that are weak and weary and they can be strengthened and empowered. Hallelujah! I wonder if anybody wants to give away a little bit of what they have. Does anybody know the power of giving away? When the disciples took the five loaves and two fish on that day, they didn't think it would be enough. But as they began to multiply, before it even left the room, hear what I'm saying today. Before it even leaves the room, before this message leaves the room, it can be multiplied here. Can you imagine Jesus is standing there with the 12 disciples? They this little boy, we don't even know his name. They get his lunch. Five loaves and two fish. Just think about it. What? Thousands of people? 5,000 people plus women and children. And you're going to do what? Jesus told him, you feed them. What? I have hard enough time feeding myself and my family sometimes, right? You know what I'm talking about. Feed them. There's a lot of hungry people out there, folks. And we look at ourselves and say, we can't do it. I know, because I remember when I came to this church, some of you, you didn't think we could do it. You didn't think you could be involved in ministry. You didn't think you could teach a small group. You didn't think you could do this. You didn't think you could do that. But I'm here to tell you today, if we'll go, he will go before us. He will make it possible. He'll take our five loaves and two fish, a little lad's lunch, just enough for the, just enough for the little boy. Can you imagine him coming home that day? Mom saying, what happened, Johnny? Probably wasn't Johnny over there. It probably was Zacchaeus or something. Right? What happened today? Well, they took my lunch. What? The disciples of Jesus? But you don't know what happened. Can you imagine? They took my lunch. And Jesus broke it. And he gave it to his disciples. And before it even left the twelve, think about this. It had already multiplied. Before it leaves the room, it will multiply this message. If you are willing today to receive what the Lord has, it will multiply in your hand. I promise you. Has anybody ever discovered this about Jesus? As you give away, you get more. As you give away, you get more. In fact, the Bible says that there were 12 baskets left over. It started off as five loaves and two fish, and there were 12 baskets left over. And you know what that means? That means, because you, you guys know what it's like at a church picnic, people eat till they're stuffed. We'll do a few. In fact, we got one coming up this month. We'll do a fifth Sunday later this month. So come join us. We'll, 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 we'll make sure. It won't, I don't know if it will multiply or not, but I'm just saying. Uh, the reality is that's what happens. And it multiplied in Jesus. He breast and broke it and he gave it. And that's, that's, 
That's what Jesus does. He takes what little we have. And you say, well, he's taking, no, he's not taking it. He's taking it so that it can be broken and it will feed. Do you think that little boy went away empty? No, that little boy got as much as he wanted. He, 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 he may only have had two fish when he showed up. Maybe a little, got little kippers or something, you know, little snacks, just a little something. A little, just a little small little thing. But it was multiplied. He got as much fish as he wanted. He's got, he got more to eat than his mama could have given him. You see, we have this mindset that when we, in our culture, we have to be very careful of this. That, and it's not a mindset of Christ. That The Bible teaches us that when we give, it multiplies. And we will have more than what we have. I can guarantee you that young boy had more to eat than he thought he was ever going to have from his lunch. It was only a lad's lunch, folks. And I don't know how old he was. It may have been a lot of food or a little bit of food. I don't know how big the loaves were. I don't know how big the fish were. But I can tell you this. It didn't matter once Jesus multiplied it. It didn't matter once Jesus got his hands on it. It didn't matter, matter once it was blessed. And I'm here to tell you today, God, if you will understand this, if you will give what you have to the Lord, he will bless it and it will multiply. It will be enough to feed your family. It will be enough to feed your neighbor. It will be enough to feed our city. That's the way my God works. My God is so powerful. If you will give it to God, he will take it. He will multiply it to meet the need. Whatever the need is and more, he will supply all our needs according to his riches and glory. This is the beautiful of his legacy. His legacy to the kingdom is, is that as we give, we get more than we gave. As we give it, it multiplies and it produces much fruit. This is the power of what Jesus has brought into the world. It's the power of creation. It's the power of the one who speaks and the world was formed, who came to earth and said, give to me your brokenness. Give to me your wickedness. Give to me your flaws. Give to me your blessings. Give to me the good things in your life and I will multiply them. I will make them better. I will turn them into something beautiful, into something good. And the disciples became people that became worthy of the kingdom. And they went off and they baptized people. And they began to teach. And Jesus' legacy, the infilling of the Spirit. This is our powerful, powerful concept that the Lord is sharing with us today. God's desire is that there would be a blessing among us that would be multiplied to meet not only your needs, but everybody around you. If we're honest, we're living in a culture that's struggling mentally. That's struggling emotionally. Struggling financially is the increase keeps going up, the cost of food, various things. What are we going to do? We need something to multiply. It's not enough to add things anymore. We need something to be multiplied. Jesus is very clear. Jesus' legacy, the infilling of us, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Hallelujah. That's God's desire. That's God's desire. How many of you want to receive the legacy of the Lord? The legacy of giving your life so that others can be blessed. The legacy of giving and then finding out that it's multiplied back to you. That what you gave in death came alive again and it was multiplied into the lives of others. If anybody wants a blessing for family, if anybody wants a blessing for your neighbors, if anybody wants a blessing for your city, may I suggest that you give it to Jesus and see what Jesus can do when he breaks it. And he blesses it, and he hands it out. It multiplies. It just blows my mind that before they even left Jesus, it was already multiplied beyond what the young man had given. Before it leaves this church today, every single one in this building can receive everything that their soul desires. I promise you, if you will look to Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Tarasuriata. What is the greatest gift? What is the greatest inheritance that God has ever given us? It's the Holy Spirit itself. The Spirit of life. The Spirit of power. The Spirit that created the heavens and the earth. The Spirit that created the trees outside the windows. That's going to bring freshness to this earth over the next few weeks. That is all created by our God. And if He can do that, how much more if He cares about the lily of the field and if He cares... About such about the sparrow that falls, how much more, my brother and sister, does he care for you? Oh, I would to God that someone was hear what I'm saying today and respond to the voice of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Matthew 10, 7 through 8, 
He told them, and you, as you go, preach saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. There's a time to give. Do you know, and I think most of you do, the joy of giving. There's something about giving someone you love a gift. And make no mistake, Jesus loves you. We used to sing it as kids, Sunday school, those of us that were able to go or went to church. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. The Bible tells me so. We're now living in a world that doesn't go to church enough to hear it. We're now living in a world where there's a generation of people that have never been to church, that have never heard that Jesus loves them. We're living in a time, folks, when if we don't give it away, it'll go stagnant in our hands. It's like the Red Sea, right? Only an inlet, but no outlet. I don't know about you, but I want the Spirit of God to flow through me. I want my blessings to flow through me into my world. I, I, this is the, the Lord's legacy. The Lord's legacy that He left to us is abundant life. Is a legacy of giving so that you can receive more. The legacy of dying to your own will so that the will of God is done. The world can be blessed. I wonder if there's anybody here today that is thankful for the blessings of the Lord. They're thankful for Easter. They're thankful for the goodness of God. They're thankful for the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. There is a legacy that we can live. And I want to live the Lord's legacy. I want to live it every day. I want people to look at my life and say, "What a ble- you are so blessed. Tell me about the source of your blessing. Tell me why you have joy in times of sorrow. Tell me why you have healings when you're sick. Tell me why you have life. Tell me why you share this hope. And you can say, because I first received. He gave it to me. And I want to give it away. Because when I give it away, it multiplies. It multiplies. How many of you want more? I want more. You know, there's a very simple answer to that. It's not about this world. The world says, gather, gather, gather. The Bible says, give, give, give. And when we give it, it will be multiplied. It will not only be multiplied to the people around us, but it will come back to us. Amen. As you go, and I say this to you today, as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Hallelujah. Does anybody want to stand with me today? Would you stand with me? Thank you. Lord. Could you thank the Lord for all of his blessings? Could you thank him for what you've received? If you need something from the Lord, he's here today. He's here today. He'll give you what you need. Come on, if you're empty, he'll fill you. If you feel a little unworthy, he'll cleanse you. He'll make you worthy. Would you go to him right now, Lord? I look to you today. Oh, can we reach a little higher? Go a little far closer. Come on, can we stretch a little bit more? Hallelujah. The altars are open. You please come join us up front if you feel willing. Let's just come to the Lord. Let's look to Jesus. Let's reach for him. Let's look to him right now as we sing this song. Oh, cry out to him today and say, Lord, I need from you. Lord, I want to give back to you. Regardless, let's come to the Lord today, either to receive or to give. Yeah. Come on, if you see someone up front, would you come pray with them, saints? Come on, let's gather around as a family. Come on, let's share what we have. And let's see if God will bless us with more. Hallelujah, let's pray for one another. Hallelujah. Let's let's bless one another. Come on, the Lord's legacy. As I give, I gain. As I give, you multiply. Come on, if you need something from the Lord this morning, would you give more away? Hallelujah. Every moment I'm away, have your way in me. This is my desire.
There's no... No place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. That's it, come on. Let your faith no out right now. Come on, I'd where do you put your trust? Be. Put your hope in the Here Lord. In your love. He's the creator of Here the heavens and the earth. Love. Is there anything too hard for no God? Place if he is God, be. is there anything too hard for him? Hallelujah. No Cast your cares. Release your burdens. Hallelujah. No Get to Jesus. Come on, get to Jesus. Here in your love. Here in your love. So set a fire now. I get it. I give 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 it. Hallelujah. That I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. Set a fire down. That I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be than here in your love. Here in your love, come on, pray no for one another, bless one another, give it away, give away what God has given no you, come place on, place I'd rather be, be. no place I'd rather this is how we multiply, this here is in your multiply. love, this here in your love, so set a fire down oh, in my soul, that I can contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. I want more. 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 So won't you pour it out? I want more. I want more. I want more. That I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Here in your love, here in your love. No place I'd rather be. Give yourself to it. Come on. No you get place out of it. What you pray to it. Hallelujah. Give it all. Give it all. No like the man with the little lamb with five be. loaves and two fish. Give Here it all. Here in your love. Here in your love. Yeah. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Here in your love. Here in your love. I want more, 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 so won't you pour it out? I want more, 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 so won't you pour it out? There's no No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Here in your love. Here in your Come love. Come on, pray for someone. Set a pray for a family member right now. Come on. Soul, As we pour it out, let it flow through you. Hallelujah. Pray, 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 pray. I want more yeah. of you, God. Set a fire down in my soul. That I can't contain, that I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. No place 
I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. No place I'd rather be. Here in your love. Here in your love. Oh, I feel the spirit ministering. He's moving through us. Come on. As we minister one to another. Hallelujah. That's how the blessing comes. Come on, if we want it to be multiplied, we got to share what we have. If we want it to be multiplied, we got to put it in the Master's hands. Hallelujah. Our world needs more. Our world needs more. Our world needs more. Our world needs more. Hallelujah, hallelujah. de la patria. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to ask you a question this morning. Does anybody know an unsaved loved one? Anybody have any unsaved loved ones? People that just don't know the Lord, just don't have any hope. Do you know someone that's sick? Amen. You know, the, the Bible is very clear about this. It's not our power. It's his power. It's his legacy. It's his power. It's his authority. It's his dominion. And God wants us to have this powerful legacy. It's his, in his will. Do you hear what I'm saying? It's in his will that everywhere you go this week, you lay hands on the sick and they recover. Seriously. It's not something for the past. It's for us today. When someone's hurting, we need to share the hope we have. Has anybody ever done that? Does you know what I'm talking about? Then that's when joy comes to your life. There's nothing like testifying about something God has done in your life. Whether well, there's anybody here today that feels like a rerun from something that we did last year this time. Was well, there's anybody here that's willing to testify this week? If God gives you an opportunity, you'll tell someone, hey, this is what happened in my life. When I was sick, this is what Jesus did for me. When I, was, when I was hurting, when I was lost, when I was alone, when I was broken, this is what Jesus did for me. And when we share it, it multiplies. It multiplies. I promise you, if you pray and ask God, He will open doors for you. And then you will not only be getting something from God, you'll be giving something away. And that's when it multiplies. It doesn't multiply till we give it. Our world needs people that will take the bread that we've eaten today and the fish that we've eaten today and multiply it. In Jesus' hands, it will be multiplied. He will bless it. He will break it. And he will give it to us as his disciples. As we've heard this morning, we have come to this place. And we've taken a very simple message. I'm not going to pretend this was some great masterpiece. But let me tell you this. This is just five loaves and two fish. It's not a whole lot. It's what I had to give you. So I'm giving it to you today. Who is willing to take it and share it with somebody? And as they share it, come on. Somebody will be blessed. Somebody will be filled. Somebody will be healed. Somebody will be delivered. That's the way this works. It's not some great big way up in the pie in the sky thing. It's sharing what we have. Like the man, the little boy with five loaves and two fish. And I don't know what you have in your life. If you will give it to Jesus, I promise you, your family can be changed. Your family can be changed. Share the testimony you have. Share the blessings you have. And God will give you more. God will give you more. Because God loves to give abundance. He loves to abundantly bless. He's a God of abundance. Just look outside. You can see it. It's an abundance. And God likes to make more than we can comprehend. So one more last time. Could we lift our hands and receive from the Lord? Heavenly Father, we receive from you this inheritance, this infilling of the Holy Spirit. God, we got to have it to give it. And Lord, if we have it, we must give it. For as we give it, it will multiply. It will fill the earth. This is the legacy. This is the legacy of our Lord. Hallelujah. What am I going to do with it, Lord? I'm going to give it away. I'm going to give it away. Hallelujah. Come on, give away some love. Give away some joy. Give away some peace. And it will be multiplied in your own life. Hallelujah. Let's sing this song one more time, and we're going to conclude today with this song. Let's worship the Lord. power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, 
break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. Sing it with words of faith. Come on, speak it. There's an army rising up. There's an army rising up. Well, there's an army. To break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. To break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain. Well, is it true or are we just singing a song? Is it true or are we just singing a song? Is there anybody willing to enlist in the Lord's army this week? To go out of this place and share the word of the Lord. To testify of his goodness. To make the enemy be ashamed of himself. For trying to bring doubt and fear into the lives of family and friends and neighbors. To pray prayers of faith and see the sick recover. To see those who are sick of soul, sick of heart, sick of mind. That's God's will. Let's find together, amen, today. I'm going to just miss us in prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I'm so thankful for what we've heard today. I pray, God, that you will touch our hearts and our minds and our spirits as we go this week, God, to multiply what we have heard, to take, God, not to keep to ourselves, God, to give away in Jesus' name, to see, God, you at work in the lives of those around us. In Jesus' name, I pray a blessing upon every person that's heard the word today and let it not return void. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands, all you people. Shout with a voice of triumph. Hallelujah. We have the victory. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God bless you. Go in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Love on everybody.